Hi, I'm Tom Burgess, and thank you for listening to The Real Agenda, the podcast for political change. Hi, I'm Satya Katara, and welcome to the latest edition of our weekly series, The Weekly Wake Up, the news, comments, and action show. Indeed, we certainly hope we're going to have all three of those for you today. We're going to look at some of the events and things that have been happening in the last week. And then we're going to get some updates on what's been going on in the media related to the real agenda and the issues that we want to look at. And then finally, some of the other events and activities that are coming up and how you can help make change happen. So stay with us. Hope you enjoy the show. It's great to have you with us. And we hope to this will become a regular weekly slot for you on The Real Agenda, the podcast for political change, and the great name for the show, what did we call it? The Weekly Wake Up. That's indeed. So wake up, listen to it. Okay, well, on with the show then for this week. Are we ready, Satya? Mm-hmm, I think In, so. Okay, well, good. Yes. Well, the first thing we can, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to be talk about some of the events and things that have happened in the in the last week that uh, we've been involved with regarding the real agenda or that face of, uh, related to the key issues, urgent issues of our time that we're trying to solve. The thing I went to was organised by Radix, the um, think tank, the Radical Centre think tank, and they did actually, it's a book launch. It was all about revitalising politics, and the book, A Guide to New Political Movements, How to Do Politics in the 21st Century, by Nick Silver and Zoe Hodge. Now, one of the interesting things about this was it actually looked at other parties in other countries, like the Podemos in Spain, and also it looked at old parties like the Liberals in in Canada, and what the characteristics were. Now, why is this this important? Well, we're going through some changes at the moment, and also on the panel, uh, one of the speakers was Stephen Kinnock MP, who's a Labour MP, but also signed up with More United, which we'll talk about in a minute, and also Simon Franks, who's the founder of United for Change, which is a political movement which is not currently openly active but it's working busily behind the scenes and it was interesting to get some of their views about what was wrong with British politics and how it could be fixed and I think there's a fair amount we can learn from other countries and the book's actually quite interesting I've got a copy of it here there's some change going on and if we are going to get change that benefits people there's some political changes that need to be done too what have you what what about you Satya? Well, Tom, I went to a really fascinating seminar and it was called Social Death, the Impact of Austerity and Poverty. It's quite a provocative title, Um, but I I just found it really interesting. I think the issues that we're talking about in the real agenda around poverty and around how we support vulnerable people in our country, the way that it was discussed at this seminar really brought it home to me. We had some really, really good speakers. I'll mention a couple of them. One of them was uh, Professor Chris Grover, who's a senior lecturer in social policy at Lancaster University. I was particularly struck by his talk, and he talked about social violence and social murder as impacts of the social policies that we have at the moment. And I'd never thought about it in that way, really, before, but it it kind of brings it all home to me because, you know, we hear the stories about people and how austerity and being vulnerable to low income affects some of these people, but we never think about it as actually it could diminish people's lives. And what um, Chris Grover was saying was that actually, although nobody really wants policies that affect people or want to kill people however the effect of the policies and their purposeful policies can have that impact on and they people. showed that they did didn't they that's he, he was showing that how how that had happened and some of the sort of figures and how life expectancy had uh, reduced as well yes absolutely and um so but for me it kind of really brought it home that to say you know we talk about the impact of austerity and the poverty that exists in the UK at the moment just in in numbers but actually when we really look at it and we think about impact it has on people individuals and their real lives for example someone mentioned at the seminar about Jodie Whittington who was a woman who'd suffered from uh, ill health for many many years and she was deemed by the Department of Work and Pensions as being fit for work and she was so distressed by this decision that she actually took her own life 
And one of the things that we were calling for at the seminar is that there should be a, an inquiry into this to see what actually went happen. And that's just one um, story out of many, many, many uh, stories that hear. So that, that was really fascinating. And I think that when we think about the issues that we talk about on this show, and the impact that poverty has on people and the changes that we need to make. There was about four speakers altogether, wasn't there? And it was organised by Taxpayers Against Poverty, which is founded by the Reverend Paul Nicholson, who's also been a guest on this show. And I found it fascinating too, and quite horrific really with the data that actually takes it back to people's life expectancy their, their opportunities in life and, and it's all the effect of these policies on austerity which has ruined lives we also had Faiza Shaheen there from the center from class the center for labor and social studies and she gave a personal story about her mother and then there was Danny Dorling as well he yeah covered. professor Danny Dorling was also talking about life expectancy and particularly about people with disabilities I think and how austerity affected them the other speaker was David Taylor Robinson who is a professor of public health and policy and he talked about infant mortality and how he gave us some shocking statistics of where we where we stand in terms of infant mortality and life expectancy expectancy in the UK as compared to other European countries and we're not doing very well I know um, it was it was, is, it was you know was, being the fifth it was just sad uh, really fifth richest country in the world and we have such figures as the thing is there isn't it? it it's like we've got this data there's so much information there how do we fix it? And actually, we do know how to fix it. One of the things that the Reverend Paul Nicholson is very keen on is that we collect this evidence, and we've got evidence that can be presented. And this is what will happen from that event, because we've got the slides and we've got the video. It will be going as evidence to various committees, to various MPs, to various uh, other political organisations, to try to get some action, because we can fix it. There are things that can be done. And yeah. I would say to our listeners also that actually all this information is on Facebook, and if you are interested, please do go to the Facebook page for Taxpayers Against Poverty. And it's taxpayersagainstpoverty.org.uk is the website. Please go there and have a look as well. There's lots of information. Get involved because when you see the information that's on there, I think it, it will strike you and hopefully most of you will want to do something about it. Once again, coming back to the Reverend Paul, he lives up in Haringey. And he's so active in trying to help people in temporary accommodation. We've, there's loads of case studies. Uh, uh, but these are, case, these are lives of real people, some of which I've met and getting moved around from place to place. And particularly with this seminar held at the House of Commons to try and get this stuff pushed forward a bit more. And, you know, very grateful to the speakers that did that. Yeah, he uh, talked about, um, you know, people in his borough that were in temporary accommodations for over 10 years and were just being moved around from house to house and that they just had no housing security whatsoever. And, you know, they were heart-rendering stories, really. And you had something else you wanted to add, didn't you? Had a, yeah. What, the Reverend um, Paul the said Reverend you picked something out. The Reverend Paul actually did a prayer at the beginning of the seminar and I just want to share one little snippet which I thought you might be interested in. Part of that prayer was... In a time of austerity, we pray, in solidarity with thousands of UK citizens currently suffering sanctions, which are imposed with the maximum use of the media to blame decent people for their own unemployment and poverty, for the millions of UK citizens who are suffering under unmanageable debt due to the high rents, the council tax, cuts in social security imposed by Parliament, Thank you, Satya. Yes, I think the other thing is, uh, on a lighter note, to say happy birthday to the Reverend Paul, because the next, on the 10th of May, I think it is, is his 87th birthday, and he's still campaigning. So thanks very much the, to the Reverend Paul. That's and, great. And uh, we look forward to the next uh, seminar and event from Taxpayers Against Poverty. You can find out, as we said, more about what they're trying to do to bring change online. So I'll just come up with, a, there's a couple more things we thought wanted to highlight which I thought was more uh, quite interesting. More United, which some of you may come across, was set up um, after uh, Joe Cox, the MP, was murdered. Cross, a cross-party collection of MPs. Joe said that, you know, there's more that unite us than divide us, and it's about coming together. 
and now they've just relaunched uh, what they're calling the uh, More United Network, which is a new initiative. And obviously the time is right because it's, it has, we've seen more MPs, particularly with the Brexit issue, working cross-party and so on, and that's very encouraging. There was a live stream with actually Stephen Kinnock, who we've just mentioned, Stephen Kinnock MP, and Heidi Allen from the Change UK team, so formerly a Conservative MP, a couple of days ago on um, on Facebook. And so it's good to see that that sort of thing is originally, also originally set up by the late Paddy Ashdown. So let's hope that more comes of that, of these MPs working together to solve the key issues that, you know, have been not been solved or, or not been solved because of party ideologies, We've got to get these answers and we've got to get some action. And I think, Tom, you're right. That's the only way that we can create the change with more people from different parties wanting to do the right thing for the country, coming together and working yeah, together on yeah, these things. It's, it certainly is, and I think it's we're seeing a change in the party things, but it's also not just at the top, it's people coming down to a grassroots level. That, you know, with 14 million people in poverty, we've got to act on it. A lot of people are doing some really good work on this, but we've got to come together and make things happen. And let's hope with this more cross-party working and focusing on the real issues, the real agenda... We'll see some change. So, and, and over to you, Satya, for I think the last one we're yeah, going to talk about this week. I think, Tom, we can't leave today without this section, without talking about Extinction Rebellion. I think most of our listeners may know, especially in London, that Extinction Rebellion protesting against, uh, about a climate change and they caused major disruption in and around London for over two weeks. We were just talking about it earlier and saying that actually the way that they organised themselves, given that they had such a huge agenda, they actually made their point in such a wonderful way. One of the things they did was that they had teams that were in, set up in certain places around London. Uh, they were very, very well organised. They knew exactly what they were doing and they kept very, very clearly to the issues that they were protesting against and the issues that they wanted people to raise awareness about. And if we could do more things like that, I think that that would be really, really good for our country. You know, a lot of the news angle on these things gets picked up. It's like difficulty people get getting to work and all that sort of thing. So that's the news angle but actually the news angle should be need for action on our climate and I think also it's very positive that the parliament has actually declared a climate emergency whether that's going to have an effect on the government but you know that was one of the the demands if you like of extinction rebellion so I think that's a step forward in sense of the level of awareness so in terms of bringing that awareness and getting action then that sounds um, positive yeah they've actually made some you know major steps forward for their cause our friend Zach Polanski, who is one of the organisers, and, and Zach actually was on the um, Real Agenda the other day. We had him as a Challengers for Change because he's a relentless campaigner on these issues. He appeared on site Sky News and BBC and things like that a few times. Given, I just think that there's a lot that we can learn from the people involved in Extinction Rebellion in terms of how to campaign in terms of how to make a major impact, but also in a very good-natured way, and that's how they did it. And the other person I really want to mention was Greta Thunberg, the young girl from Sweden, Sweden who um, started off by actually not going to school because, uh, because she wanted to protest against climate change and she wanted to, people to be more aware of it. You know, what she has done is actually she's made that issue global and this is just one young girl. And you think if one young person can do this, any one of us, if we had the tenacity to do it, could actually make major changes. So our call to action to all of the people who are listening to this show is, if you really want to, you can do it. And we would encourage everyone to get involved. Let's look at some of the things that have been going on in the media. I had a couple of um, stories here, Satya, that I'd like to, we could have a chat about. Okay. One was one was the thing with the Social Mobility Commission that came out the other day, that inequality has, will remain entrenched in the UK from birth to work unless the government takes urgent action. This was the Social Mobility Commission, and it's their State of the Nation report that said the situation would remain virtually stagnant since 2014. So it's like very difficult for people to... Move up, you know. If you're born privileged, you know you're or if you're 
born to a privileged family, you're not likely to continue that. And if you're not, you're uh, likely to continue that too. So it's very tough yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah, and it has an impact on every aspect of one's life. You know, in the way that they were talking about at the seminar yesterday, and that you know, if if you're in a a borough that is a, a poor borough, or if if you're in Chelsea, then your life expectancy is vastly different. And actually, you're very close. You're living actually very close to each other. I know it is, and I think one. one I mean, certainly with the Social Mobility Commission, they're calling on ministers to provide additional funding for older teenagers in education and to extend free childcare to more low-income families. So here we are, you know, we think we're moving forward. We think people have got a chance to uh, move up from uh, low-income or no-income positions and it's becoming increasingly difficult. And, of course, these, this is sort of a setback to Theresa May who promised to tackle the burning injustices of social inequality when she entered Downing Street in 2016. What's happened since then, Satya? I haven't seen very much, have you, Tom? <laughs> I certainly haven't, and it yeah. keeps coming up. People keep mentioning it. And I personally, I do not think it's an excuse that it's, you know, Brexit's been going on, we can't fix anything else. I know their headspace is full up with loads of things, but we have to sort this out. People have to have the opportunity to better themselves. And it's not happening. And we have to change Yeah, that. I think that um, these policy, austerity policies, they're a political choice. They're not actually what we need. Um, and there's so much research and so many economists who have said it should be the other way. We should be spending. We should be actually investing in our communities, in our people. And that's what's really going to make the change for the better. I know, that, that's the thing, isn't it? But, you know, what happens is people say, oh, yeah, but where are we going to get the money? Well, the argument is we've got the money. It's just with the wrong people in the sense that, you know, there's a huge amount of wealth created in this country. The current system means it's just accumulated by a few. Now, uh, if we can change that, which we indeed we can, then there's going to be more money available. And also, it's not just that, but if we didn't tax people um, on low incomes and, you know, they didn't ha- we abolished council tax for tenants, and then brought in a land value tax. And that would make such a big difference to people's incomes that, you know, they're spending more money. They can afford these things. They don't have to choose between heating or heating or paying the rent. And uh, there are things that can be done. Oh, it's just not happening. The shame of it is, Tom, that I think our politicians know that, but actually they choose not to see it. They choose not to do what needs to be done for the good of the whole country rather than just the good of the yeah. few. Yeah, just coming back to council tax, because actually there was a report out uh, in the last week where it was said uh, last week or so the council tax debts in England have soared 40% in six years. So people can't afford it, heat or eat, rather than pay you know council tax. And so obviously debts are increasing. And actually coming back again to the, like, the Reverend Paul and some of the work he's done with people that can just not afford to pay their council tax. A huge amount of money local authorities spend trying to take people to court to get their council tax paid, and these people have no money. Luckily, some councils have stopped that practice because they don't get anywhere, and it just adds more burden to people who already can't afford it. Yeah. I mean, I was just listening to something the other day where they were talking about if somebody actually misses out on their council rent for three months, then they have to pay the whole year's, um, this is council tax, on their council tax, they have to pay the whole year's council tax, and that's the policy. And if they don't do that, they're in real trouble. And it causes so much distress for families who are already under so much pressure. So, yeah, and the figures here say the total council tax debt in 2017-18 was three billion, an increase of 27% over 2012-2013 when it was just 2.4 billion. This is another side effect of this uh, austerity policies. Instead of austerity, we should have been investing and we have got the money and we've got to be, we're going to make things happen, make life better for people. We've got to ask those that have the money and those that have accumulated the wealth to share it more. Once we do that, there's more circulation in the economy. If the money circulates more, it, you know, because yes. poorer people are obviously going to spend it, spend all their money, aren't they? Because they, they can't afford to save it. Exactly. Anything else you wanted to add on that, Satya? From the real agenda, this is why we set this up, is that we know that things have to change, they can change, and we are able to change them. we just got to make it happen. Uh, w- and one final thing on sort of the media roundup was it's the announcement that the Institute of Public Policy Research, who we've featured on this uh, 
program before when they brought out the Economic Justice uh, a commission the report of that prosperity and justice the other day they launched the environmental justice commission things it got covered a bit on bbc today program where john humphreys laid into ed miliband about all this and anyway it was a bit of an extraordinary interview but the good oh, it's thing- a shame i didn't hear that <laughs> i didn't hear that one well, so let's just watch this space then maybe we can feature it when we they certainly, do come out we certainly with information we, we certainly will okay so we're nearly at the end of the show the, um, for, for this week, so thanks everybody for listening. But there's a couple of things that uh, are coming up that may be of interest. Actually, talking about the Institute of Public Policy Research, they've got an event coming up next week, UK and the Global Economy, which could be interesting. Um, I'll certainly be going along to it, and I'll just mention a couple of points um, from the real agenda. We're going to do the podcast, we're going to do one of the shows about revitalising politics, which will be based on that event that I went to the other day. And we've also got an interview with United for Change, the uh, political movement that is, uh, as I said, in stealth mode. And we are Resolution Foundation last September. They did a uh, issued a report, the Intergenerational Commission reported, and I'm going to be talking to them next week about that, like six months later, and see how far or what's happened since then. The call to action for the everybody, call to really. Action. Just go on to the... Um, uh, taxpayers against poverty website um, taxpayers against poverty dot org dot uk yes and on their facebook there's lots of information on there um, look up the stuff that we've just talked about from the seminar and um, get out there talk to your friends talk to your local politicians really galvanize people because the more of us that say no more of this the better it will be and also, I think the thing when we're talking about no more of this, it's also about a positive agenda because we, we want to be putting forward positive things that could be, could be changed. And I think as, as this show progresses, we are going to be a bit more specific. There are, of course, other organisations. One we interviewed the other day, Compassion in Politics. That's another very interesting one that you can contact. Look at their website, compassioninpolitics.org. And get out there, talk to people, and uh, see what you, um, you can do. How about that? What do you think? It's great. What are Tom. you going to do? We're that's gonna... great. <laughs> good. I'm getting involved with the real agenda. That's right. Oh yeah, and that's a good point. We need people on the real agenda. We've been putting out a call for this. So if you're interested in getting into involved in pod- podcasts, let us know because we need more yeah, presenters, please don't do. we? we need, Absolutely. We need presenters. We need editors. We need people that um, can actually do interviews. So if you fancy going out talking to people or interviewing people, then let us know because we want to expand the range of shows that we're doing. We're doing at least one a week. It's um, getting a lot of work for us, but you know it's very important to get the message out. So we w- we'd love people to come forward and say, yeah, I can help and give a few hours to do this and do that. Absolutely. So I think that's, um, that's sort of taken us up to the, to the end of the show, really. Is that a, what, anything else you want to mention before we go? No, I think it's been really fun. Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad, glad to hear that. I hope, <laughs> I hope everybody else who's listened to it has thought so too. We've had a lot of fun doing this. Making change can be really fun. Get involved. But I think, you know, one of the things is, I think one of the things is that, um, or rather there's many things, yeah, what we're trying to do is to put the message out um but there's a lot more that, that other people can do these issues are urgent and they can be fixed and that's i think our particularly our main message you know we, i talk to quite a lot of people you know and they say oh well you know it's not going to happen but it can and a lot of the campaigning organizations say but it can yes it can okay then well just to wrap up so do tell us know what you think you know do email us at tom at real agenda radio.org um with your comments and ideas as this is your show and we'd love to hear from you as we just said but it's a and uh, so thanks very much indeed for listening and thanks for the five out of five rating that we still have there so that's great so but please pass the message on let's get your friends to listen to the show and particularly this new weekly weekly wake up show which i keep calling the weekly wrap up sometime but i think we've, we've, we've decided on weekly wrap. that's better isn't it weekly Such wake up wake up yeah weekly wake up is a bit better so we're trying to wake <laughs> up here but uh, and you can subscribe by sending an email to us and we'll put you on the mailing list or you can through your podcast provider check out our website www.realagendaradio.org and you can follow us on instagram facebook and twitter we've been a bit quiet on instagram recently maybe we'll start that again and a special thanks to our sponsors the reverse media group one of the fastest growing search and media companies find out why at reversemediagroup.com but one thing's certain people want to see change to a more compassionate and just society as well as more courageous politicians prepared to do the right thing for people over party it's urgent and it's up to us to make it happen 
That's the real agenda. I'm Tom Burgess. I'm Satya Katara. Thank you very much indeed for listening and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay, goodbye.